Daniel chapter number 5. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. It's a big party. Because he had to their wives be 2,000 children and drank wine before the thousand. So, looks like an all-male party that you see that would happen in Esther. You know, the men are in one area and the women are in another area. Belshazzar, while he tasted, defiled blasphemy, the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out the temple which was in Jerusalem. So had he tasted the wine, it looks like it's just begun. And he sit at the table and so like, all right, hold it. Let's bring those gods of the Hebrew. Makes you wonder maybe a, he a couple Hebrew servants came in or something. Hey, let's bring their god vessels into this thing. Uh, note here, Nebuchadnezzar was the father of Belshazzar in the biblical sense that David's called the father of Jesus. The father can be a grandfather, great-grandfather, when you check out the status. <coughs> so, Nebuchadnezzar is told to us by his son, by a Babylonian document written in the Bible that Nebuchadnezzar went and raided the temple that was in Jerusalem and gathered all the goods. That's recorded three times in the Bible. We're even given a list that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Well, notice the king, all his princes, his wives, got more than one wife, and concubines. We're going to have a big party here, the spoils of war of the God of the Bible. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple, the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. With, you got an unholy mixture in holy vessels. You got to wonder. Israel is such in a backslidden condition. Uzzah offers the incense inside the temple and he gets leprosy, and no one has immediately dropped dead on the floor for touching God's holy instrument. Uh, David's friend there, he touches the ark because it, it juggled, and boom, he's dead. Nahab and Abihu offer strange fire. Boom, they're dead. So you know what it tells you? That these vessels of God in the temple are not God. They can't do nothing. They're locked up. When the temple, I mean, when the, te when the ark is brought into the temple of Dagon, Dagon falls on his feet before God. The ark is gone. The revelation is recorded in heaven. God is not in the presence of these cups and all. And you say that for the reason when somebody, well, you know, I can go out in the forest because God's in the trees, not in the cups. And then when that Roman Catholic priest says, I went many years as a child to, he raises that cup. This is my God, he says. What did Jesus say at the Last Supper? Did he say what was in the cup or did he say cup? He said cup. So get the point that God is not in the cups. He's not in the silverware. God which was at Jerusalem and the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines drank in them. They drank wine. How many times has that just been mentioned in, in four verses? Drinking wine as heathen men and women in God's instruments, and you can say that it's okay in a church? 
You haven't finished Daniel chapter 5. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold. So now they're blaspheming God of the Bible. And of silver. And of brass. Of iron. Of wood. And of stone. That is the image of Daniel chapter 2 except the wood. Belsizer remembers a certain little image. In the same hour. Uh oh. They didn't get much time to drink, did they? The same hour. Unless they guzzle, guzzle, guzzle. They're not really that drunk. Came four fingers of a man's hand. Four fingers and a thumb. And wrote over against the candlestick. Now is that the one that was in the temple? It said in verse 2. Uh, take the gold and silver vessels that was his father Nebuchadnezzar taken out of the temple. Is that the seven pronged golden go uh, candlestick that represents the light, the churches? Sitting in a drunken feast. Upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. So we are in the king's You ever read about the palace of the the, 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 uh, the Jewish leaders in Jesus' time? And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. And I would think the fingers that hold in the instrument. Exodus 31, 18, and John 8, 8. Then the king's countenance was changed. His face was changed. And his thoughts troubled him. Conscience, Romans 2, 13. So the joints of his loins were loose. He's shaking in his boots. He's about to pee his pants. That's not written there, but he's he's about to, the Bible would say, piss his pants. Piss against the wall. He is afraid. Wouldn't you, if you're sitting at a table and you see a hand start writing on your wall? They make movies about that junk. That's found in the Bible. That's where it comes from. Movies are junk. The Bible is real. You know, Thank you thing. You remember that character? I remember there was another movie about the hand that was severed off a man to go around and do things. You just saw a Hollywood television junk show in Daniel chapter 5 and you didn't even know it. Dun, 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 dun. I can't tell you the name. Unless you want to talk about Adam, Eve, family. Oh, look at that. That was particular. Somebody must have been reading their Bible. Okay, get back on here. And his knees smote one against another. He is scared. I have never been this scared. I don't think I've ever been this scared in my life. I think the most scared as I ever been is when I almost drowned. Other than that, I, I can't remember. I don't think I've ever... I have shivered and almost near froze enough to be not... But not. I don't think I've been ever this scared. I may have. My memory's gone. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldees. These guys are always just brought in, aren't they? The soothsayers. It's on top of their head to bring in the magicians. This guy is having a drunken party, using the Lord's vessels, worshiping the gods of gold, silver, and all that. And who does he call in? A Christian magician. Uh, no, I mean astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. And the king, you can find their ads all over the internet. You won't believe it. And the king's smack is said to the wise men of Babylon. 
Right? He's these gentlemen that showed up with, with Nebuchadnezzar, who couldn't tell nothing about the dream, and who couldn't tell the tree, the tree dream. They're worthless. Imagine picking up a newspaper under your horoscope and old pages, and it says, you're going to find new love today, and you're in a prison. Uh-oh. That's almost bad as taking your fortune cookie after a Chinese meal and find that wasn't chicken you ate. No. Kind of fortune. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation, 2 Peter 1, 21 or 29, thereof shall be clothed with scarlet, that's a rich color, and have a chain of gold about his neck, that's authority, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. He is the second his father is the first. His father is still reigning. It's a joint reign. But Belshazzar is here in the kingdom. I think his father is out fighting a, a battle. Or he's in another area. I, I believe the history. Of that. that you're going to have to check. Then came in all the king's wise men. But they could not read the writing. Nor make known the king the interpretation thereof. Why not? Because it was written by God and no soothsayer, no worldly wise man, no magician cannot read what God has to say. God is not going to give them the interpretation of his word. They're blind leading the blind. And here's a great example. And they're both going to all going to end up in a ditch at the end of this chapter. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled. And his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. This party has just become a killjoy. God ruined this party. You know why I like doing, well, I haven't been doing my job, and I'm well, doing Friday night and Saturday night street meetings and all that, because when you get the word of God and their hearts walking by, you know that God can, is capable of ruining a party. With the word of God. This is the word of God, isn't it? And it's ruined the party. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lord, came into the banquet house. So she wasn't there. Now this is his father's wife. Not told. But for so whatever reason, she had enough sense not to be there, or whatever, you know, she wasn't there, she comes in. And the queen, the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. That's a general. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee. You imagine the scene and putting her hand, her hand on his hand. Ugh. Come on, calm down. Now let thy countenance be changed. She knows something. I mean, excuse me. She knows nothing. She has no idea what's going on. She hasn't even seen the hand right. She comes in after everything. She's like, calm down. If this would happen today, she'd open up a pill bottle and give him a couple pills and, you know, to calm him down. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Did God speak to her? Like he spoke, speaks to women often in the Bible? She comes walking in. She hasn't been there. She walks in and says, you know those wise men you got? <clears throat> there's, there's another man who has a spirit, the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, small g, she hasn't been converted. She's still a heathen queen. There are gods for everything. Was found in him. This should be true for all Christians. And all Christians should be understanding wisdom. And wisdom of the God. Should be in us. We ought to have that spirit of the Holy God in us working. And this is a testimony of a heathen woman. 
about a man of God called Daniel. This is the testimony that Daniel held in the palace. If you want somebody to, to help you, you go to Daniel and you go to his God. Now let me ask you a question, Christian. If any of your friends, co-workers, or anybody like that tomorrow would see a doctor this week, or have a police officer knock on the door or get a letter from the U.S. Army Department with some kind of bad news. Would they know enough to come to you that you are of God and somehow something that you can do would help relieve them? Or are you just a wise man, a Chaldean, a Suse, an astrologer? You're with the crowd and you couldn't decipher nothing in the Bible. Do you know one verse in the Bible that if somebody has died that you can put in a card, you know, comfort them with the word of God? Do you know what verse would be used? Do you know how to give answer? That's in the Bible. It says we are to know how to give someone answer, and that's in the New Testament. Who King Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. So Daniel should have been known. His position should have been known. But who's going to call that holy roller and first stop? You know, we do that as Christians. Oh, I got something wrong with my body. We go run to all the doctors, all the physicians, without running to God first in prayer. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, and showing the hard sentences, and dissolving the doubts, were found in the same Daniel. That's much to say about this young man that God's given him. These are all by God. Daniel does not have to hang on his wall a diploma of what this woman said about him. He has no degree, but this is what the character of Daniel is by the queen of Babylon, who worships gods. Whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called. And he will show the interpretation. You imagine all these wise men and the soothsayers. You imagine their, their jaws is dropping on the ground. You know he's going to get it right. That holy roller Daniel. Such a goody two-shoe. And that's what they say about him later, you know. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. He's not at the party. Now, can you? I like to read a little more into the Bible. Can you imagine Daniel walking into this place and saying, That looks familiar over there on that table. Yeah, that, that reminds me of something, of something that was in the tabernacle. No, I can't be. That one over there, too. Remember, he doesn't know what they're drinking from. Daniel does not know he's standing in the presence of God's things. And the king spank and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel? Gotta be other Daniels. Because why would he say that Daniel? I mean, if, if you're going to come up to me, you're going to say, You're not going to say, Art thou that styling? This is only one. Sorry. <laughs> now, if you know my family, you would say, Art thou that styly? And there's my, my uncle and my grandfather. There's other Daniels. Which are of the children of the captivity of Judah. You a Jew? Whom the king my father brought out of Jewry. We brought you out of the land of Judah. That's what Jewry means. The land of Judah. I have even heard of thee. From the queen. That the spirit of the gods is in thee. From the queen. And that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Just from the queen. 
Why did he say, my mother or my wife told me about you? He takes the credit. I have heard about me. It's like that Roman centurion said, I saved Paul. Oh, come on. No, you didn't. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, true, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. I was like, I can see him laughing. You guys failed again. What are you doing here? Man, what's, what's this? It's called a pink slip. You guys are fired. Daniel had that right because he was put over them. They must have been protected by law like, like the Roman Catholic Church. You know, like Pharaoh told Joseph, those priests over there, they get free food. You can't tax their land. Here's a bunch of men in the government who don't do nothing, don't know nothing, and they're getting a check. And the boss can't do nothing about it. Does that sound familiar like America? I've had plenty of jobs where people don't do nothing and they get a paycheck. And I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretation and dissolve doubts. That's what the queen just told him. Now, if thou canst read the right, he's doubting. That's a doubt. And make known to me the interpretation thereof. Thou shalt be clothed with scarlet. Beautiful, bright, expensive. And have a chain of gold about thy neck. Authority. And shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. When we get there. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself. I am not going to have no more ruler worship me. Daniel learned his lesson, didn't he? And he probably knows what's going on. If he already knows what's going on, he's already thinking, Sir, you're dead. <laughs> Keep it. Because tomorrow morning, there will be no Babylon. If he knows what's going on, or that little thing that he let Nebuchadnezzar worship him. Let thy gifts be to thyself. Give thy rewards to another. Get you those, those wise men like, hey, I'll take it. Someone's always anxious to take something that's worthy of yours, as in credit. The Bible is up to date. Yet I will read the writing unto the king. Look how proper he is. This guy has defiled the God of the Bible, and he's like, I'll read it to you. Just keep it junk. No cost. And make known it make to known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high capital G God, he's giving credit to God. What if God put President Obama in your path today? And you were given opportunity at least ten minutes to say whatever you can, Secret Service will allow and all that. What would be your open remarks before President Obama? Would you call him a title of respect or be anything but godlike? The Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom. Ooh. Well, if God gave him the kingdom, he's sitting in the kingdom. Guess who gave this kingdom to Belshazzar? It came from his father. It came from God. And majesty. Look all around. They say that, you know, Babylon was a wonderful thing. The hanging gardens are one of the wonders of the world. It's because of God. And glory and honor. Chapter 4, verse 3, 37. Chapter 4, verse 37. And for the majesty that he gave him, the king, all people, nations, and languages. That showed up last night. Before him, whom he would slew, and whom he would keep alive. Look at the power this king had. 
When the king said, Haman, you're going to hang, guess what he did? He hanged. The only thing that, that really changed the thing was, hey, king, he made his gallows. Okay, go hang him on his own gallows. You know why America did not want a king? Because the power of a king And you know what? What are you going to do when King Jesus shows up? When he looks at you, if you're against him, he's going to throw fire right through your eyeballs. Are you going to stand up as American Christian? We're going to have no king. We're going to have a, a Christian president, Mr. Jesus Christ. Take down that throne of David and put a White House. We're going to have a Christian in the White House. You fool! I want King Jesus. Who has all power and authority and judgment and does it with equity, who does it with right and does it with holiness. And would he and whom he would keep alive, and whom he would have set down set up, and would and whom he would put down. It's just telling you what the power of a king was in Babylon. You had a tea party in Babylon? You ended up in the river, not the tea. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, that is the last chapter. When his heart was lifted up, his mind hardened in pride. He was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory away from him. Now, that was not talk among you know, the newspapers and all that. Where did the king go? Oh, we found out here. He's a lawnmower. And he was driven from the sons of men. Last chapter. And his heart was made like the beast. The wolf man. And his dwelling was with the wild asses. He's in the wilderness. He's in the valley. He's in no palace. They... Fed him with the grass like oxen. He's eating, he's eating grass. He's a lawnmower. He's a lawn boy. Luke chapter 4. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. So he slept down in all conditions. I think, what was it? Three, seven years, was it? Till he knew that the Most High God, capital G, ruled in the kingdom of men. And that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. We read about that last night. Get Daniel chapter 4. And thou his son, O Belshazzar. Now notice the lasting testimony that Daniel leaves about his father is he got right with God. Daniel chapter 4. And now thou his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart. Though thou knowest all this, uh-oh, knows what? Your father got right with God, and you have not. You even have the nerve to bring God's things into your little orgy. Do you think that maybe Belshazzar was making fun of the God of his father by having all this stuff at his table? Oh, my father got right by. Just bring that stuff on here. We'll show how good that God is. My father's a holy roller. Ha, ha, ha. I don't have anything to do with him. That guy, is he's a freak. That's a possibility. But, has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. Now he's getting a rebuke. And they have brought the vessels of his house before. How did Daniel know that? He comes in after the writings on the wall. He walks in. He sees everything there. Like, that, that, that's not yours. Or he heard about it on the street. What are you guys carrying? I'm carrying this stuff from the treasure house to the king's party. This is stuff of your God, Mr. Daniel. Uh -huh. And thou and thy lords, thy wives, thy concubines. He's naming them all. He's looking around the table. Thou 
the lords, your wives, your concubines, pointing to them. You know, you use illustration with your hands, like Italian. Ooh, I shouldn't say that. Have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver. Now, how do he know that? He was, he was not in the room when that happened. I mean, he could have seen people walking back and forth in the streets of Babylon carrying this stuff. But he didn't know they were praying. God told him. God has told him what has happened in that room even before the interpretation. Daniel, yes, sir, Lord. When you walk in that room, you better be careful what you touch. Why, Lord? Because it's mine. And you're a Jew. You are under the law. Don't you dare take a drink out of any cup offered to you. That's mine. Think not? Think so? Gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone. Then you didn't leave any out. Which see not, they're blind, nor hear, they're deaf, nor know, they're stupid. Daniel just called every god of Babylon blind, deaf, and stupid. Standing before the king that has what? He has power to keep alive. He has power to set up and power to do. God has given Daniel guts. He walks up to the king of Babylon and says, Hey, your gods are deaf, dumb, and blind. Would you like me to read the thing now? You know? And the God in whose hand thy breath is. God is the holder of your life. You know, if God doesn't want you to take that next breath, you will not take it. I don't care what hospital, what doctor, what paramedic, what they do to you, what they put over your mouth, any kind of uh, bottle, gas, or anything like that. If God takes that breath, your breath is gone, saved, or lost. Is and whose are all thy ways? God knows everything. Not Santa Claus. And God even directs thy ways. He directed Pharaoh by free will. To accomplish everything that God wanted to accomplish amongst his people. He's going to use his ignoramus to destroy the city of Babylon in one night. And only one ignoramus could do it. And it's Belsizer. And you know what God does before he pronounces judgment upon Babylon? He sends a warning. Did you realize what Daniel did? He said, you know what, Belsizer? Your gods are deaf, dumb, and blind. I like that. I'm going to keep repeating that. He says, you know what? God's in control of your breath. He's not going to live overnight. He is rebuking the king and saying, King, you better get right. Isn't that what he said to Nebuchadnezzar back here? And Nebuchadnezzar didn't listen, did he? But it happened, and Nebuchadnezzar got right with God. Belsizer's turn. Belsizer never gets right. You know how he ends up? Dead and in hell. Whose are all thy ways has thou not glorified? Now remember, he just compared him to his father. You take what he says about Sarah and compare to what his father did? Nebuchadnezzar is the complete opposite of Belsarja, which I would say Nebuchadnezzar, uh, somehow, some way, I believe is going to be in heaven. His son ain't going to be there. Then was part of the hand sent from him. Here's the warning. And this writing was written. This is the writing that was written. I wonder if even, you picture maybe you didn't look at the wall. Maybe stand, it's behind him. Wouldn't that be funny? Eyes behind your head. Mini, mini, teko, 
you're fire son. You probably may say the other way. This is the interpretation of the thing. Meaning, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. You a dead duck. Your kingdom's gone. You imagine if all the newspapers planted in the paper tomorrow morning's edition. America is finished. Imagine the panic that would happen. Teco. Thou art weighed in the balances. And art found wanting. Acts 17.31. You can't weigh yourself against God. There is nothing you can give to God to, to change the things that's going to happen right now. Your kingdom is finished double because it says many, many. Fireson. That is a root word or a single word of your fireson. The kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Now let's go back real quick to the image that his father saw. And Chapter 2, verse number 32. The image head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver. We'll stop right there. And where does it say, you're the head of gold? It says somewhere, the head of gold is thou. Where is that? Okay, verse number 38 at the end. Thou art this head of gold. Okay. His breast and arms of silver. How many arms do you have? Okay. Now go back to where we were. Watch how the interpretation of the dream fits perfectly. You got two arms. Well, I mean, normal person has two arms. I'm sorry if you don't. But that image had two arms. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes. Left or right, and the Persians, left or right. You've gone from one head to two arms, one government to two governments. This is the, the silver. The gold is gone. The head is gone. Belsizer went to his head, didn't he? Nebuchadnezzar went to his head, didn't he? You know where America's going? Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain. He didn't believe it, did he? He's a man of his word, but he didn't believe it. He didn't ask Daniel, or the God of Daniel, how to get right, did he? Thank you for your interpretation. My city is completely destroyed. There was a king like that in the Bible. I forget which one it is. Oh, man, in in your son's days, this kingdom is going to be just blah, 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 blah. He said, oh, good. It's going to be good in my time. It's okay. Wow, well, I'm living. Then commanded Belsizer and clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night. History will prove this. Was Belsizer the king of the Chaldeans slain and went in hell? And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. And you talk about a water gate. They lowered the pressure or the, the flow of the river and they snuck under the walls by the water gate while all this partying was going on and Daniel knew it and God spared Daniel because he still has a chapter 6 a chapter 7 chapter 8 what happened to Nebuchadnezzar he falls off 